तुम तम दीम तदीम तीरना Mohiniyattam, the classical dance of Kerala, is defined by its soft lasya bhava and reflects the simplicity of Kerala culture. Though like all the other classical dances of India, it too is founded on the principles systemized in the Natya Shastra. The mudras of Mohiniyattam are from the Hasta Lakshana Deepika, as are the mudras of Kathakali. But it is not an offshoot of Kathakali, as is a common perception. In the third quarter of the 19th century, Mohiniyattam too had come under a cloud of social prejudice and the dance and the dancers fell into disrepute and decline. It was only in the 1830s that the extraordinary Maharaja Swadi Thirunal, understanding its intrinsic worth and vitality, saw the grave need to reclaim Kerala's heritage dance from forever being lost. His numerous compositions for Mohiniyattam are living testimony to his great effort. But his life was tragically short. It was nearly a century later that the great poet Mahakavi Vallathol, who founded the Kerala Kala Mandalam, took up the task once again. It is at this juncture that a young Kalyani Kutyama, breaking free of the shackles of regressive social traditions, and spurning marriage proposals, armed only with acumen and ambition, arrived at Kalamandalam to meet the great poet in order to pursue her studies. 
വള്ളത്തോള് ചോദിച്ചു എന്തിനാണെന്ന് ഇങ്ങനെ വന്നാൽ എന്താ കാരണം ചോദിച്ചപ്പോൾ ഞാൻ ഉള്ള സംഗതി പറഞ്ഞു എനിക്കിങ്ങനെ പഠിക്കണം അതാണ് ഏ എന്തേ ഇപ്പോൾ ഒരു പഠിക്കണം എന്ന് തോന്നുന്നത് അങ്ങനെ എനിക്ക് പഠിക്കണം സ്വന്തം കാലം വലിയ ജീവിക്കണം ഇറ്റ് വാസ് വള്ളത്തോൾ ഹു എൻ ട്രീറ്റഡ് ഹർ ടു സ്റ്റഡി ഡാൻസ് ഇറ്റ് വാസ് ഹിയർ ദാറ്റ് ഷി മെറ്റ് ദ ലെജൻഡറി ഗുരു ഓഫ് കഥകളി കലാമണ്ഡലം കൃഷ്ണൻ നായർ ഹു ടോട്ട് അഭിനയ ബാക്ക് ഇൻ ദ ഡേ ഹോം ഷി വാസ് ടു ലീറ്റ് എ മാരി വള്ളത്തോൾ എന്നോട് പറഞ്ഞു മറ്റുള്ള കലകളെ കൊണ്ടു പോലെ ഒന്നും നമ്മുടെ മോഹിനിയാട്ടം തന്നെ കുറവരുത് I was unable in my lifetime to elevate Mohaniyattam to the stature it is worthy of. I succeeded with Kathakali. But Mohaniyattam still leaves a lot to be desired. I am entrusting you with this task. This he said to me on his deathbed. He passed away 4 days later. On hearing this I panicked. I was filled with anxiety as to whether such a task was possible by me. But he said there is no need to panic. This feat can be achieved only by you. Kalyani Kutiyama traveled the length and breadth of Kerala, searching out every detail available from hidden recesses, gathering information to further her understanding and deepen her knowledge so as to enhance her ability to bring back the essence of Mohiniyattam that is so reflective of the culture of Kerala and carrying forward the illustrious legacy of these legends. Are their daughters Guru Sri Devi Rajan and Guru Kala Vijayan along with their granddaughters Srimati Smita Rajan and Srimati Sandhya Rajan Namaskaram This is Sandhya Shankar from Music of Madras bringing you Acharya chat Today we have a very extraordinary personality with us and uh, due to the prevailing times we are having a Zoom chat with her all the way to, at Ernakulam. Uh, we have amongst us uh, Guru Sri Devi Rajan who is a doyen and a veteran of uh, Mohini Atta. Let me al- allow one of her senior most students and her uh, a follower of her dosa vargis to do the introduction ah uh, thank you sandeep ma'am at the very onset i have to you know appreciate express my appreciation and gratitude to the music of madras for you know having such a fantastic platform where i have the privilege to introduce my guru my teachers you know uh, it's just a privilege for me to be here to introduce them um my association with the family now is closing to almost two decades and if i have to describe uh, introduce um, guru sri devi rajan i would say she is somebody who epitomizes mohiniyattam she is everything beautiful about mohiniyattam i keep saying you know she is as soft and she is as gentle she is as demanding and as gracious everything about guru sri devi rajan is reflective of mohiniyattam i'd say and uh, shrimati smita rajan her daughter taking forward this legacy so beautifully with so much passion and so much dedication um unfortunately i don't have my teacher shrimati sandhya rajan with me here today she couldn't join in for this meeting but she's also very much part of this amazing family and uh, guru sri devi rajan's sister uh, guru kala vijayan she's also part of this uh, wonderful lineage that we have taking forward this amazing um mohiniyattam legacy that has been given to us so yeah uh when i interacted with uh, rosa uh, sometime last week uh, seeking this interview uh, what came across very strongly to me is the kind of uh, admiration the devotion and uh, the complete you know surrender that she uh, showed for her teacher and this art form and today having met you people though virtually uh, i i am very con- i mean i now know why it is so uh, rosa you were right even in her smile and the way she is sitting there is so much of grace and so much of beauty in it namaskaram uh, i can may add you know her outstanding quality i think i've said this before which defines mohiniyattam and which defines 
my guru, I would say, is simplicity. She's such a, you know, knowledgeable, uh, I don't know, sometimes I'm at a loss of words, <laughs> but her simplicity, the way she takes her, you know, she conducts herself is, uh, is something that, I mean, this is exactly what I want more of the world to see, you know, that I'm able to present them to the larger audience. That's the privilege that I'm so grateful for that the music of Madras has given us this platform to do that. Our privilege too. Uh, uh, to start at the beginning, um, I know there is a great legacy even before, uh, uh, you know, from a long time. Uh, Smita, your grandmother, that is uh, Guru Sri Devi Rajan's mother, who has been a, a very famous, the mother of Mohini Atam, I must say, correct? Correct, oh, yes. Yama, isn't it so? Mm -hmm. So, my grandmother is considered the mother of Mohini Atam. Um, she is the person who re revived this dance form, reinvented it, and brought it to the current stage uh, from where many other dancers could start from. So what she has, the work she has done is the starting point for many other Barneys of Mohini Adam, currently what we see now. And so she is considered the mother of Mohini Adam. This must have been years ago when uh, there must have been so many restrictions, so much, I mean, things were not as easy as it is today. Yes, yes. In Kerala, especially uh, in the Nayak families, in the, you know, in the olden days, ladies were not allowed to go out. They were not, the sound was not about, you know, allowed to, uh, to be heard outside. They were supposed to be uh, very, you know, they need to be inside their houses, inside their homes. So at, at that time, my grandmother, who was a scholar uh, from a very young age, she wanted to, she went to visit uh, Mahakavi Vallathol at Kerala Kalamandalam, uh, the purpose of, uh, for the, for the appearing for the Vidwan exam, uh, to appear for the in Sam, Sanskrit, Sanskrit exam, she went there. And uh, her family is very closely related, you know, close friendship with the Mahakavi Vallathol. So that's the time, Vallathol at the same time was searching for some good girls from a good family to, 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 to take it for, you know, for the good Mohiniyatam Gurukulam. Because by the time in the society, Mohiniyatam was in dance form, which was totally, you know, degenerated and it was not in a, you know, it was not, it could not be presented in a uh, proper, proper audience, you know. So then good family girls never wanted to, you know, learn yes, Mohini Atam. So learn Mohini Atam. So that was the time when Amama went there. I call her my grandmother, right? Amama. So she went there to Kerala Galamandalam and Walatol asked her to join the institution. So Amama, Amama being a, a scholar and she who has a very good knowledge of our Puranas and the epics or of, you know, our Indic, you know, civilization. She has a very good hold of, you know, good, very good knowledge of that. And she, uh, didn't hesitate. She welcomed. She, you know, welcomed that invitation. And uh, from then, she was a part of Kerala Galamandalam. So there, she lived there. She had to, you know, to 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 leave the family behind. The family actually uh, outcasted her from the from the family. So she was set, you know, out. She was out of the family from then, and she decided to leave the family and join Kerala Galamandalam. And Kalamandalam, she started learning there in 19, sorry, yeah, 19, 1937. And uh, um, yeah, the life changed without her even knowing her life changed from there. So she. She's, I mean, when I'm, when, when my association with them, I get to hear stories from uh, Pani teacher and Smitha, and they've been part of this, so closely associated with this entire. I mean, they've known firsthand the challenges that she had and all that. And I mean, I think it's amazing at those days, like no phone, no means of transport, the way she would have traveled the that length is, and breadth of- That is for the research, research. work of finding the roots of Mohaniya. So uh, in Kerala Kalamandala, Mahakavi Vallathol could uh, revive Kathagali and uh, bring Kathagali to the, the current stage. But he couldn't do much work for Mohini Adam. So in, when Namama left Kalamandalam in 1940s, um, after that in Kalamandalam, there was uh, no Mohini Atam for another you know, few mm -hmm. years. There was no Mohini Atam taught there. 
And later in uh, Mahakavi Vallathol invited Amama back to Kalamadlam to teach there in Kalamadlam, but Amama couldn't do that because she and my grandfather, my, they both met at Kerala Kalamadlam. And because they got married while living in Kerala Kalamadlam, that's the reason uh, my grandmother and my grandfather had to leave Kerala Kalamadlam. So after they left Kalamadlam from there, do you want to tell the story of Amama? Uh, she went to Dramendram. Uh, there they joined in Sri Chitrudaya Mattagalayam run by Travancore government. There she taught Mohaniyatam. Uh, she used to tell me in the first batch, uh, the Travancore sisters, Padmini Lilita. Lilita Padmini Lilita. Ragini. The students. Yeah, after a few years, I met uh, Padmini at the Chennai. Uh, two years back. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, then I asked her, do you remember? <laughs> sure, she taught me. Tatate. <laughs> Tatate is in the first title. The first title. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so from there, she started teaching Mohaniyatam from there. And then, then they traveled, uh, shifted to Desamangalam, Ranakulam, Anubani, Vellarapulli. All, I mean, everywhere she had classes, plenty of students by God's grace. And uh, she taught Mohaniyatam there, I remember. It's, um, and uh, when she was in Nala, Alve only, Vallathol Mahakavi called her. And uh, well, she, yeah, he he was in his deathbed, and uh, in Ernakulam at his uh, son's place, Mahagavi called in called Amama, and she went there when uh, Mahagavi actually asked Amama to take up the mantle uh, to revive Mohini Atam. So from then she took it very seriously. Um, uh, her life, uh, from what I remember, I saw her only with Mohini Atam. So she. She traveled across Kerala to, to, to visiting the temples, visiting the old uh, Devadasis, whoever were available at that time, whoever uh, were uh, you know, alive at that time. She traveled across Kerala, the, you know, the borders of Tamil Nadu, and uh, to, in search of the route for Mohini Atam. So, and uh, do, you know, during the days in Kalamandalam itself, from her guru, she had known that uh, there was an item in Mohini Atam, uh, which is like a storytelling. And in the Kacheri format, which was practiced in the olden days, was which which went for the whole night and it uh, like six hours and all the norm that that then Kacheri used to happen. So in that, some of the missed items. So in Kalamandalam, uh, when Amama learned there, they learned Cholkatu, Jadiswaram, Varnam, Padam, and Tilana. So, but he, the guru told her there were two more items in this kacheri, regular kacheri pattern. And um, during, with her research work and everything, she saw, met um, some of the Devadasis. She brought some of the Devadasis to our in home, her home in uh, Tripulitura. Uh, from them all, she collected all the, you know, lost parts she could collect. And she combined the whole thing and she built a repertoire which consisted of seven items in a full repertoire. So the last item is a saptam. Saptam is a, I'm sorry, story. item which talks about a story of a king oh, or a, you know, of a deity or something like that. So she penned uh, two saptams, that is the Ramayana saptam and uh, yeah. Parvati Parinayam saptam, Shiva Parvati Parinayam saptam. And that these are the sec last, last item, the seventh yeah. item. So basically, she had written a lot of uh, uh, she poems. yeah poems um, like uh, for the whole repertoire she has written and she has composed all these items and um, and there were not the item uh, I think one of the first items she uh, wrote and composed was Vedika Vedika Kati. Yeah. The speciality of that item is that. There is no Shrungara, but there are all the other forms, all the Navar Rasas in that time. 
that is you know when the mohiniyattam during those days everybody thought the only bhava which mohiniyattam has or had was shringara and bhakti shringara rasa and bhakti rasa so to to rewrite that to to she wrote this particular padam which has uh, the navarasas which is included into the saitam so actually um, uh, you know she, uh, my amma has performed varigavari uh, sagi and i have shared a small clip with you so hopefully you sh- you will be able to present that item uh, or watch that item absolutely absolutely we we will be watching that item very soon and so will our viewers this uh, journey that uh, kalyani kutti amma your amma has taken is uh, simply inspiring i mean at times when um, to have sacrificed her own family and to have chosen this difficult path and uh, where uh, she didn't have the luxury of internet or you know uh, different modes of transport you don't have all these uh, access to all these things that we are today enjoying or i must say whatever we we are at least having uh, despite yeah. that the length and breadth of kerala to revive a, a art form like such as mohini artam we owe a lot to her contribution uh, and uh, this must have cost costed her a lot of uh, personal sacrifices 
without, definitely, definitely. without doubt. I, I remember as a child, my mama just going out, you know, she just goes out. And I used to worry at that time, you know, I never knew how to express my anxiety of her safety. But I also always used to, you know, really used to worry what is, how is, how she is, where she is. There was no phones, no much, you know, transportation. And in fact, in 2019, uh, during the documentary um, movie production, production, I traveled through the route where she started. She started from Kanyakumari and I could travel to most of the places where she went. But I was feeling so bad because I was traveling in a car with AC and everything, all the all the comfort I, I could have. And I was thinking, how in the world she reached some of the remote temples in Kerala and in the bordering places of Tamil Nadu? How she went there, how she reached there. And some places I I, I can imagine how much she might she might have walked all the way and in the night time she's you know lived with some of the the the, the close uh, people with the temple people you know nearby people she stayed there and uh, she took such a lot of pain such a lot of time away from the family and um, yes i remember as a child i remember she going out from the family in search for the route of mohini yeah. <laughs> But she, ne she has never complained. Never complained. Never complained. Every time she comes back, she comes back with more energy. More energy, she comes back and she used to write down whatever she found out and whatever new findings she saw, all those things she used to write down. Uh, she used to send it to Sangeet Nada Academy. Yeah. The summary of her. her, her yeah. yeah. Whatever she found, whatever new knowledge she received. Yes. We must be grateful that she uh, managed to record all this rather than, you know, otherwise they would have lost a lot of uh, wealth, in, uh, you know, just due to some carelessness. Also, I think uh, how she managed to do this must be only with a lot of passion and devotion to the art. Most important, there must have been a divine grace that yes. must have uh, protected her from... Uh, Dedication. Dedication. Yeah, she was a very, she was so, uh, what to say, if, if the guru says something, that's the only word she had, you know, she want to follow. Mm. So that kind of a, that, that same thing she has passed on to us also. So um, especially with the, you might have seen today, this one very common, very uh, uh, evident one difference is the hairstyle of Mohini Atam which our mama had for is, you know, mama and her Bani and her students are following to the common hairstyle, which is followed by all other dancers, all other Bani's in Kerala. So that was the hairstyle, the Konda hairstyle in Mohini Adam, where my grandmother had learned the, the back pleat, uh, pleated hair, hairstyle for Mohini Adam. So in the, while she was learning in Kerala Galamandalam, Mm, Shanta Ravu, the dancer Shanta Ravu, who came to learn at Kerala Galamandalam, she is the first one who uh, suggested this particular hairstyle, which is similar to the Raja, Raja Revi Varma pictures. So mm -hmm. at that time, Guru Krishnapanikar Ashan and Mahakavi Valatol was completely against this particular style because it didn't follow any scientific reasons. This particular hairstyle with the, 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 uh, the pleated hair, it has a lot of scientific reasons which the guru was insisted, you know, you cannot follow that, you cannot do that. This is a classical dance form and you have to follow that. So even if later when Kerala Galamalam uh, switched to this particular Konda style, Amama was so adamant that, you know, you, you shouldn't do that. And she wanted her students to follow this. But at the same time, she has also told these everybody else, but if you feel co you know comfortable in that particular style, you can follow, but never say this particular style is wrong. So she wanted to keep her word. This is just one simple example I said, that's all. She wanted to keep her word to her gurus and uh, both to Krishna Panigarashan and to Vallathol. She, she, she had that guru bhakti, which uh, she had showed us and which we are all trying to follow her. <laughs> oh, I can see yeah. it uh, even up to, uh, deep, I mean, down up to uh, Rosa, that uh, this <laughs> Guru Bhakti has trickled down. Uh, one, quick, one quick question about uh, Amama is, uh, why did uh, her marriage to your grandfather 
propel them to leave the place? Uh, yeah. Couldn't they have continued there? He was also a dancer, if I may say. Yeah, that was that. I think that was the fate. You know, my grandfather was a teacher there. He was a student at Kalamandalam, and he later became a teacher there. So he was one of the teachers for Amma who taught Abhinaya, mm -hmm. um, facial expressions for the dancers, the, the Mohiniyattam group. You know, students there. So uh, later point of time, you know, Amma coming up from a very orthodox, you know, Nair family in Kerala. And being a scholar, being a um, social activist, being a um, environmentalist, you know, she she um, she used to write a lot of poems and everything. Even Mahagavi Vallathol had given her the title of Kavayatri because she wrote one poem during on his 60th birthday, right? Yeah. 60th birthday, she wrote a poem for and presented it to, to, presented it to Vallathol, and uh, he gave her the title Kavayatri. So, you know, she she never couldn't stand any injustices in the society. So, and I've heard stories from both my grandfather and my grandmother, how sometimes it was difficult in that society for a lady to continue uh, or be alone in, you know, dancing in, a, in dancing in that old days. And my grandfather supported them a lot. And uh, during one of the performances at, it, at a Vanyipura Palace, Vanyipura, Vanyipura Palace, um, some of the old people, uh, they conducted, they did this marriage, which was a secret marriage, you know, in, it, it happened, that happened, you know, the ha marriage happened. But in those days in Kalamandalam, the, the inmates shouldn't get married. If they are married, they should go out. That was the rule, it seems. Oh. But there was some, some inside um, politics, which, which was going on there. And um, and there were some other stories also, uh, which happened earlier. I think something happened, some inner politics happened then, and uh, both my grandmother and my grandfather, they had to leave Kerala Kalamala. But later I heard, I've heard that uh, the, the same way when another couple, uh, you know, Kathagali artist uh, and uh, the Mohini Atam Guru, Khatiwama teacher and Padmanabhanashan, they were also, uh, you know, married after coming to Kadamandam. But by that time, that rule was had taken out, you know, and they are they continue to be teachers in Kerala Kalamala. But I believe now, so that was some inner politics which happened there, and uh, they had to leave Kerala Kalamala. So they must have had a good reason. Uh, probably they didn't want to encourage anybody uh, getting distracted maybe, maybe. from the art uh, and uh, you know, in this in the studying the art form and uh, indulge in uh, anything uh, thing at the same time uh, the, it also is sounding so romantic that they had to uh, <laughs> come out and they were again invited yeah, their marriage out. their marriage happened uh, in Ajit palace uh, manipura palace in the presence of uh, the raja and rajni there yeah it's very <laughs> understandable when they work in such close proximity that their yeah. uh, uh, intimate bond is created between two people. Yeah. Now coming to their uh, uh, next generation, which is uh, Guru Sri Devi Rajan, who's mm -hmm. with us, your mother, uh, the most amazing. Uh, uh, I was so impressed reading her profile. I have not had the good fortune of seeing her perform, probably because we live in this part of the country. I have seen some Mohini Atam performances. And um, uh, I heard that she had the good fortune of learning both uh, Mohini Atam and Bharatanatyam. Both from your mother? And Kathakali. And Kathakali, yes. Uh, of so, Kathakali and Mohini Atam, both you had learned from your own mother, I understand. No, yeah, no, no. Uh, I can, uh, from mm -hmm. my memories, I can. Um, Amma started learning, uh, you know, from a very childhood, she started uh, learning Mohini Atam. I was present then in a, in a uh, very natural. important part of every class of Amma and Achyam. For classical Mohini Atam and then for Kathagali, I was a member always. What and unknowingly, I, study, I yeah. started studying uh, by seeing these classes. I slowly, I think unknowingly, I started yeah, studying. Then learning was very natural for them. You know, at three, at age th three years, she did her arangetum in more, you know, she did her arangetum. 
Amazing, amazing. In fact, I've heard that she could uh, dance even before she could walk. That's what I heard. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, because I'm surrounded by life. this uh, ambience and uh, you know, such a such an inspiring parent, parents, I must say, and supportive. So this must have been a natural growth for her. Uh, how yeah. was your mother yeah, as a teacher? Uh, money teacher i uh, your mother when she taught you was she very strict was she very uh, indulgent she was very strict but never get that much angry mm -hmm. uh, for example i'll tell uh, she started to uh, she told the children to learn this the students didn't properly they didn't uh, do it proper. So what she said is, okay, carry on, do it. And the children started doing it. 10 minutes pass, 20 minutes pass. No, continuously. The third day was continued. <laughs> My God. The patience which, we, which she had was amazing. And uh, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> But I think money teachers also like that, uh, you know, so soft, but I keep saying so demanding. If you look at her choreographies, you can know it is money teachers choreography because it looks so soft and so gentle. And so, but you try and do it to justice to it. It's very difficult. Yeah, because I, I can I can very well remember how uh, my grandmother used to write, uh, you know, write on pen down poems like Padams and uh, um, uh, kirtanams and uh, saptams and everything she wrote she writes and then she put the raga also she has it in her mind how and which raga to each 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 poem each lines she should have and then she you know immediately she will ask you know call i had been into that classes i remember a mama will call me you know, during the lunch you know break times like lunch time you know, afternoon periods she will call me and she will just teach me items. So if she's teaching a Varnam, Varnam usually will go for half an hour. So she will just call me and she will be teaching that Varnam in one full stretch. But she, that one full stretch that Varnam she will teach. So I, I knew like I need to be that attentive in that class so that after it has been done, you know, she will ask me to dance again because she's polishing that item. The ones, the choreography she has done, she's polishing it. So I need to be that attentive in the class. And um, again, can I tell? Also tell I had a, I had been in most attended most of her classes, and uh, the I had been with her teaching students. So I had assisted her teaching students. And I remember uh, my amma and my charyama, both of them saying. Um, during their younger days, how uh, Amama used to travel across and teach to different students and, uh, you know, different parts of Kerala. And during those times, my grandma, my mother and my auntie, Charyama, they both used to be with um, Amma, my, you know, grandmother and uh, uh, assist the classes. So, and uh, they both, you know, both my Amma and my Charyama, they both had been a very important part uh, during uh, during the the journey you know the she was reviving trying to revive this dance form so they are do you want to talk about that uh, she was uh, first day. at first when she was composing the items the adavus uh, and all she will make us to do and she'll polish it and she will make it fine and then it's set. So 32 adavos she composed, right? 32 yeah. adavos she composed, right? And she wrote all the, there is padas, yeah. there is charis, there that is, is the grammar. A, grammar. Everything was, is there. Adavos in, in, in most more than, I mean, adavos, adavos, all these things also were there. That is the rule. And she taught it as us and then the students, and she wrote it in, in as a book, the first book for Mohiniyata. Oh, for Mohiniyata, are Adavos, Chaidis, Padams, like that. Padams, she gave names 
of each uh, animals. animals. For example, Religion. this marking like this, Hamsa Pada. Mm. That digi 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 that is Mayura Pada. Kukula Pada. Kukula Pada. Tik it tai. What a treasure she is left behind for uh, the next generation. So uh, she laid the nice proper uh, foundation. No, I mean, there is no words to uh, explain yeah. that uh, uh, how much one is taking the effort, one is recording it and making sure that this knowledge is transferred to the next generation. Exactly. Uh, otherwise, we would have blocked so, the whole... Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think, when, I think when honestly, thought, from an outsider's point of view who came in to learn Mohanyatam, because I thought it was nice and I enjoyed <laughs> it, but I've been so drawn into it, it's never been about them. It's always been about the dance and it's been so deep and, you know, you're just drawn into it in, at such a different level. And like you, you say, you know, you see, I think they were grown up with this amazing, this formidable lady and what she has achieved. It's hard not to be moved by it, you know, and uh, you will never, be, I will, could never view Moinyatam the same again. How old was she, Smitha, uh, when uh, hmm? your grandmother passed on? I'm about 84. And she was active till about the end? Oh, yes, big time. Only last six months she lay down. She, she was bedridden, bedridden, last six months. She was very active. She um, taught. Um, she was more, you know, she had performed. She performs. If you ask her to, you know, somebody sings, she will dance. So uh -huh. that is one of the performances I wanted to uh, remember here is the performance uh, for a lecture demonstration. Uh, that happened Chennai. In Chennai. 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 Yeah. So there, um, um, that day, particular day, um, Amma was supposed to sing. Amma was supposed to dance. And me accompanying her dancing. And one Edaka player also was there. So Amma was singing. So that day morning, what happened is Amma's throat in, uh, was had some problem and she couldn't sing. So I ended up in singing for Amma. And uh, it really, the, the tense scene was so serious because the performance we are trying to give it for the Krishnagana Sabha. And I remember the Krishnagana Sabha those days, the, the, the auditorium used to be filled with people. And gurus and so eminent people standing there sitting in the audience and I was singing I still remember that stage and I sang and Amama performed Amama's Induru Mohana Chandriga Bhuvidil Induru Bandhura Bhava Mago That's a song which uh, um, talks about the nature so she wrote that song and uh, her choreographies, her compositions I sang and our mama performed on that stage. So that is the time when Subhru Mama came there and after the performance, he could nobody could believe that right? because this uh, 80 year old woman is on the stage and she became so active and she performed. And uh, last, uh, last few, few months, she was better than she, um, uh, with Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's. She got Alzheimer's and uh, yeah. Such a scholarly woman um, and, uh, who was an environmentalist also and writing um, about the poems on nature. Uh, she has written books with collect her collections of poems. And I think you mm -hmm. have also taken it uh, so beautifully uh, forward. Uh, Guru Sridevi Rajan herself, uh, who you call Mani Teacher Rosa. Yes. <laughs> Mani Teacher, she was talking to me. I was already curious to meet her. And I'm so uh, happy I could. Uh, yes. She herself has been a, uh, you yourself have been a postgraduate in Malayalam and done a lot of research work. And how did you balance your school and your studies and your dance and... Uh, very I was immersed 
I have nothing else. I will, I love Malayalam also, Malayalam literature. In the school, the children loved me because of that. Because I love Malayalam, I teach the children Malayalam. And they were so happy. They used to, you know, when I teach them poems, uh, and uh, it will be singing like that, poems. So when, when, before I, when I come from the other end of the veranda, they used to start singing this poems <laughs> to enjoy it. And after coming that in the institution, that my most beloved Mohaniyatam, I have to teach. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and she has also written and uh, penned a lot of items. And uh, recently, uh, in two, 2019, December 1st, she uh, penned one full kacheni. Cholkattu, Jadiswaram, all these items until a saptam, and she made Correct. her students perform the full kacheri, her own, her own compositions. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, such a treat it must have been. In fact, even I have with me some, um, some of the amazing work she has done. Adi Shankaracharya's uh, Saundilya Lahiri and uh, Eruthu Chan's um, uh, Ramayanam and Mahabharatam. Adhyatma Ramayanam. Adhyatma Ramayanam. And uh, of course, uh, Puntanam's. Puntanam. Uh, that is, I think, uh, his work is. Uh, I think it is Bhagavad Gita, you know? Yeah. Simply Pundanam. What does it mean? Uh, God, Bhagavan, he only decides who should come up. With two days he will come up, but the other day she will go down. He will go down. He only will decide it. He only will uh, perform it. It's all his maya. Uh, his maya. Everything is his maya. Krishna. He, he wrote this about uh, Guru Vairapa? Or, uh... No. Or life. Human life. Human life. And praying to God, not Krishna. Uh, that is the basic. But correct, he is correct. The life of a human. Beautiful. How did you? How do you? Uh, uh, you need to put a lot of uh, planning and uh, understanding to uh, create the abhinaya for each one of these uh, pieces. First thing, I will take the essence of it, and uh, I told you I love language Malayalam. Yes, she is very sharp in the Malayalam literature. She she that helped students like us, right, Rosa, to understand the, the lines, the meanings, ah, and then we we'll teach go to the depth of the meaning. Of the meaning. And, and I can teach. Uh, elaborate it. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Elaborate, yeah, elaborate the idea. And it will be presented in open air. If I may just add, you know, they say beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. <laughs> So money teacher literally opens my eyes to each piece and then it would have made nothing. It would have been just something. And suddenly when you see it after she has, you know, kind of enlightened you, it all just seems so different, you know? So I really, it's just amazing. Yeah, you know, um, Amma, Amma, her classes for me as from my childhood, that is, you know, those classes actually, uh, the, the meaning she gives, she make us understand what you are doing and uh, that that inner meaning and the inner feeling which she taught you know taught me that is that is the base you know that is the strength also so uh, what we, we will love it <laughs> yeah we will love the item and uh, enjoy it when we are doing yeah <laughs> and uh, that actually enhances the performance definitely uh, definitely multifold yeah. and uh, uh, amma the uh, performer, the teacher, the student, 
So, Amma, the Amma, so which would which role does a money teacher most uh, uh, you know like perform among all the she, roles? Yeah. What do you like the most? Being a mother, being a teacher, being oh a, my God. <laughs> a daughter, a daughter, very tough, being a very daughter, tough <laughs> very tough twisting. She, but, she, she had always uh, stayed as a secret, right? She always was the, you know, she will be behind everything because uh, under the the big banyan tree of my grandparents, Kalamala Krishna and Kalyani Kutiyama, Amma and of course my Charyama, they both had been um, into this in this field from their childhood, and because Amma was a Malayalam teacher, she used to teach the language in the school, but her morning she will go to school evening she comes back straight into the dance class until night she will be in the dance class so she has a lot of numerous beautiful students perform you know student performers who are mohini atom performers and um, we all you know we all love her classes because of the way she explains each and every line and each and every word to us yes and make us understand the I, I told, I used to tell children, first you understand, then you love it, and you enjoy when you do it. Yeah. <laughs> so there's no shortcut to that. You are, uh, you uh, understand, enjoy, and then you learn it, and then you perform. Correct? Okay. Yeah. So uh, it has been a very, I, I must think that uh, from the way I am interacting with you and the way the conversation is going, I'm very convinced that this Mohini Atam or rather this whole journey of learning uh, has been a spiritual journey also. Yes. So um, uh, what, is, what has been your understanding of the spiritual journey, Mani teacher? Amma. Amma. For you. That's that's my life. <laughs> what is the understanding you're having about the spiritual? Can you explain that question? Uh, I don't understand. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, everybody's uh, experience is different. You know, it's unique. We may yeah. be walking the same path, but we will be seeing different things in the journey. I'll be seeing the mountains. You'll be seeing the rivers. This kind of okay. life we have led. So, um, money teacher, her, your cherry, cherry as you call her, yep. both of them would have probably done the same things, but their experience is very, very internal. Very it is very personal journey, you know. And I can very well relate to one of the items, Pandagendra Shayana, how you took it and how you, how you felt it compared to many other composite, you know, choreographies. You can talk about how many yeah. Have you heard it? That's yeah, I might not have heard it. <laughs> so you can. That is, uh, the dancer is deeply loved. Uh, in love. Uh, in love with Lord uh, Mahavish. Okay. And uh, uh, she is longing to see him and to uh, namas namaskar, to put namaskar at his feet. And uh, there is a stanza. Modaya, 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 I think Bauli Ragam. Ah. And uh, beautiful. And uh, and uh, before that, I did, where is another line? Mm -hmm. Take me in your hands and help me. Uh, there is the meaning of the other other line. The before just before this. I remember not mm -hmm. remember that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that I have interpreted it in such a way that, oh God, please take me in your hands from all these sorrows of this world and help me, protect me. Protect me. 
that's what I have learned. I have taken, I have interpreted it in that way. But many of the dancers here, other dancers, they have uh, when they take it, take it them. No, the, the, the padartha they took, kama keli shu. Ah, so ah, in the kama oh. keli shu, they took it in the, you know, in the small Romantic. padartha binaya they brought. When Amma, in her, you know, in her compos, uh, choreography, she wanted to bring that, you know, that divine feel or the divine bhakti, which the, dan the Devadasi is having ah, towards the God. That's so Amma's, nice. your Amma's interpretation is... Uh, Take me in your hands and uh, elevate me from this mortal from this world, world and these, uh, you know, yeah. these uh, substandard worldly, worldly qualities. Yes, yes. Exactly. And uh, give me salvation. That kind of a message. Exactly. 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 Oh, yes. so, so, so beautiful. So, Guru, yeah. Guru uh, Sri Devi Rajan Nama, you tell me that uh, all this learning of Mohini Atam, your dance, your... Uh, dedication to it and so many years you must have also experienced a lot of uh, troubled moments lot of personal sorrow joy which is there in all human beings life has uh, your uh, spirituality in this learning this art form this combination helped you become a stronger person i think so. <laughs> I think so also. Your uh, whole fountain, the way you are, it is exuding so much of grace and uh, peace, you know. Even on a virtual show, I think it must have been a very, very uh, fulfilling journey for you. Um, yes. Manikita, there's one question. Uh, in Mohini Atam or uh, what you call, Eka Aharya. So can you elaborate about it? For a novice person like me, I have not learned Mohini Atam. I've just seen a few performances. As you told, as you told in a, uh, when we describe a story in Mohini Atam, for example, this Bhavayami uh, Rupurama, the Ramayana story is explained in that Kirtan. Uh, yeah. Uh, there will be Rama, Sita, Ramana, Dasharatha, all different My different character, uh, characters. In a, all the other da dance forms, there will be different uh, costumes, costumes mm. to represent, to represent these characters. Correct. But in Mohini Atam, the Mohini Atam costume will be the same even for Rama and Ravana and Sita. Oh. And also, the, 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 this is happening in other dance forms also. And one, the one person also do can do the all these characters. characters. That's that storytelling kind of you know that is much more prominent you know in Mohini Atam. Okay, but and, it, it is very clearly established who uh, it, there is a change of character, though it is one yes. single person in you know. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It will be very very uh, ex. Explaining, I mean, yeah. uh, very clear yeah. to the audience. I have experience. Yeah. The audience will be enjoying it. And there's no confusion. No confusion. No. In, no in confusion. her choreography, in her choreographies like Bhavayami, Rakuramam, um, you know, all the, such items, you know, we can very well make out the characters coming out and the difference in the same idha, same costume. Hmm. You must bring these shows to uh, Chennai to our audience. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, we would love to. Yes, <laughs> I mean yes. they should benefit from it. I think. Yes, definitely. Uh, um, Manikisha, uh, so much of choreography you've done of Swati Tirunal's uh, works and Thampi's works, uh, also Tyagaraja Swami. Tal. But uh, yeah. uh, if I understand or, or if I, what I've read about you is true. You've also tried to choreograph Kabir Das's and Tulsi Das's works. How was uh, how was that possible? Because uh, Kerala being down south and you're taking a, a you know a North Indian language uh, literature. No, and... I, uh, by explaining it, we can make it clear. Yeah, the idea, the understanding, meaning, the meaning. meaning. Yeah. My, I will understand the meaning. And then, then I will choreograph it in such a way, it will be very clear 
to the audience. But that you have not changed the uh, language. You retain the no. flavor of the same language. How was this well, well received? Was it well received by people? Yes. That is uh, uh, that I have come in no, that also the north the Hajjan Sri Sahib. And I uh, am that uh, oh, that's also Purandar Das also in Canada, yeah. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Recently. Sri Ramachandra Dayal Bhajman Haran Hava Bhaya Darunam Nava Kanja Lojana Kanja Mukhara Kanja Bada Sandarunam Sri Ramachandra Okay, same thing, same thing, Dina Nadukha. That Hajan recently I recorded it. Dina Nadukha Harana Dina Nadukha Harana Deva Sandarunam so when choreographing that you know you can bring in the storytelling elements into that song and bringing that bhajan and uh, taking the bhajan and bringing that uh, directing into the mohini <laughs> i yeah. don't know what to admire in this her singing or her dancing or her dancing. <laughs> <laughs> or her very thought process, right? Like it's very uh, overwhelming. Uh, and one thing I want to tell, rem remember here is uh, when I grew up and when I was a dancer in Kerala Galalayam, my grandparents' institution, it was Amma who used to sing for us when I grew up. For almost 20, 25 years, it is only Amma who had sung, and for her song is I used what I used to dance in the institution. Kerala Galalayam used to dance so. And late, lately, she stopped singing for the, you know, for the stage performances. So it was yeah. she who. My uh, curiosity I, is, uh, my curiosity is getting better of me. Uh, so uh, your uh, uh, Smita, your father also was encouraging yeah. and supportive. Yes, yes. And one thing I want to remind, you know, tell here is my father is again from an another Orthodox uh, family. <laughs> so in those days, Mohiniyatam, even the dancers didn't have a very good you know that the, the the scene was changing only so when they got married he didn't want amma to dance to stop dance she asked her to stop dancing so she uh until then she was very active in the stage on, on the, the stage, stage but dancing. after the marriage she stopped performing because my father insisted to stop dancing she became more into teaching and when i was born you know me and my sister my father, I, I have seen how bad he felt and how he regretted, you know, for asking Amma to stop dancing. So he encouraged us, uh, you know, to, to dance, yeah, to uh, learn dance. With a quick question, you have to speak on behalf of Sandhya also, your sister. <laughs> was, your Amma, was this Mohini Atam legacy thrusted upon you? Was it uh, too much of a pressure, too much, too big a legacy to carry forward or you chose to take it up? It is, I would say I chose it because um, from a very young age. You're speaking on behalf of your sister also. My sister also, because for me and my sister, both of us, uh, we we grew up with Mohiniyatam. We saw Mohiniyatam. Yes, my grandfather also was there. We have seen uh, his classes. We ha we have been in his classes learning Kathakali. But the struggle which my grandmother had to take, she she was single woman with no un, no banner like a Kalamadlam, Kerala Kalamadlam. She was out of Kerala Kalamadlam. She was a single person who had to travel, who had to. Um, take a lot of pain, lot of struggle uh, to revive Mohini Atam. For us, it is our mother tongue. Mohini Atam is our mother tongue. So it was our responsibility that we had to continue Mohini Atam. And uh, when it came to after the school days, it was so normal in Kerala that, you know, you should uh, quit dancing, you should talk, take it and take uh, some serious subjects and study and then uh, do a job and go job, do job and everything. But for me and um, both of us, you know, after our graduation um, and I did my, um, my you know, master's and I did my 
uh, yeah, after that, all those things, I wanted to focus only on Mohini Atam and my sister also wanted to focus on Mohini Atam. And later, and I, in, you know, while I was growing up also, I have seen how important and uh, for me, for me especially, I can say that I need to carry the, the what my grandmother and both my amma and my churyama, they had taught me. And I felt a big responsibility later point of time because I felt, you know, I have to do it. I have to continue what they had taught me, you know, they have given to me and to my sister, both of us, yes. And it's <laughs> probably because you actually saw the value. Yes, we saw, we lived in them, you know, that. They have learned the fact of the not too much. And myself also. Yes. Yes. You know, I... Yes. I was uh, doing Bharatanatyam till my marriage. Yes. And I got uh, first in the University Youth Festival, New Delhi, in 1959. Then I was 16 years old. Amazing. Oh, yeah. Can you, uh, Mani Kishad, I cannot have a better, uh, uh, you know, uh, opportunity. I have Smita here, I have you, and I have Rosa, of course, the younger generation, all three of you. Between, uh, can you share to, I mean, can you share with our viewers what you would see the difference between uh, a certain expression between a, a Mohini Atam expression and a Bharatanatyam? I'm not even going into Odissi, Kathakali, and other things. Well, since you mentioned Bharatanatyam and you have all learned it, so how would you say both is? Uh, uh, you want to you want to convey the same thing. Uh, how would you show it differently? I think uh, both the dance forms reflects the culture of the, uh, the place, the regional, mm. regional, the regional difference is there. Mohini Atam is more flowing, more mm. graceful, continuous, continuous. Uh, even though footwork is very soft. sharp. Not uh, hard, but sharp. Sharp, yeah. Uh, like uh, Malayalam. <laughs> <laughs> Malayalam language is very soft. Tamil yeah. is really beautiful language, but very energetic. In Mohini Adam, Tai, Tai, Di, Di, Tai. <laughs> That's <laughs> and also this few seconds you have shown so much of uh, I don't know it is just amazing. <laughs> I <laughs> think the whole interview la <laughs> pora It is okay, okay. yeah enough. Yeah, you know we can sit and talk and then bring out some more things from her. Yes. <laughs> so you have been a vocalist at the AIR and you have been a performing Mohini yes. Atam and uh, doing research, composing. Yes, yes. Uh, I learned uh, classical music also when I was very child. I started learning, I think, by uh, five or five year old. When I was five year old, I was uh, I started learning classical music also. So that helped me. That helps, yes. Pani teacher, we have now some very. Uh few photographs that we would like to uh, we have uh, have for you let us see what it uh, brings back to your memory what do you say? Uh, this, is, uh, this is my daughter Smita. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that that uh, position of the hand, the body, the eyes, the eyes all you can see the symmetry. Yeah, correct. Okay, very true. Uh, yes. Even the costume is uh, much simpler than uh, a Bharatanatyam artist's. Uh, yes, sure. that also is, uh, resembles the culture of Kerala. Kerala. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
കേരള നാച്ചുറലി സാധാരണമായ ഓർഡിനറിലി പീപ്പിൾ വെയർ വൈറ്റ് ഡ്രസ് very direct very no frills even if they were to make movies uh, they managed to make it with some four coconut trees and one flake and <laughs> no big sets and uh, this was a simple storyline very beautifully depicted at the photo ah again smita same smita so this book, this uh, was actually taken for amma's uh, book mudrakyam വെരി യങ് മണി ടീച്ചർ സോ ക്യൂട്ട് This is the book you were talking about? Yeah, exactly. I have written it. It's, a, it's actually a, hand gesture, a, a dictionary of hand gestures from our vignette. It is given uh, the words list as, a, as shlokas and then transliteration for each line and then translation for each word and the meaning. i think it has yes. mu- mu- must uh, it must be a uh, you know uh, every uh, mohini art uh, artam aspirant must have this book guru dhananjayan sir dhananjayan sir when he came for one of the uh, the, the book function yeah. he mentioned that even other dance forms can also use this particular book awesome awesome yeah. this photograph കേരളകലാലയം even the little ones are there yeah 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 no. how many siblings do, do you have mani teacher siblings amma cheri amma pin etra ver undu we were seven children myself was the eldest amma is the eldest oh, all of them dance no i mean all have dance but uh, they have not professionally became dancers but one of amma's uh, sa- brother is a malayalam movie actor was a malayalam movie actor he is no more what he was known babu kalashala right. mm-hmm. so next yeah. this is due for a uh, online uh, interview uh, during the covid uh, 2020 um i think malavika men on uh, interview session she did this for the you know lasi mukhadiga cities yeah. on mohini atam this is your amma this is ah, my grandma fa- yes. send that amma and i'm going to myself on the left side and the right side to my sister kala kala And so this is the <laughs> 1919 picture yeah, of both of them and, and the young uh, Sri Devi Rajan and Shikala Vijay <laughs> with the mama. <laughs> this is myself at the center and a group of my students. I think After one of the courts, uh, courts, courts are there. Yes. Your side is also there, yes. <laughs> Very nice picture. okay if i can my you. sanjeev and my teacher <laughs> sanjeev yeah, sanjeev yeah, yeah, unfortunately couldn't join us today yeah so i'm very happy to you know present her to the, so many to the audience oh wonderful this is amma this myself oh <laughs> i wouldn't have recognized it so nice 
this is after uh, the, yeah this is after the Kach december first uh, night 2019 after the kacheri, kacheri presentation yeah. a mass composition kalaya. yeah my sister kala is at this also center. in the center yes and i'm there <laughs> uh, well so, uh, your cherima's uh, children also perform cherima's daughter in law performs okay And they are presenting this uh, no, that, uh, moment to what? This is one of their, uh, one of the item the students are performing. And her choreographies are beautiful, beautiful group choreographies she has. This is one of them. Uh, that is lecture demonstration before the kacheri yeah. so the lecture demos lecture is going on i know I, you and i think even in the uh, outside of our country in other countries you've been doing a lot of lecture demonstrations and mm -hmm. yes you know giving Most. kind of uh, in fact um, this is a question from my own uh, uh, i mean i've been pondering over this such a beautiful art form like Mohini Atam, uh, I would think that it deserves more visibility than it is getting. It is better than before, but uh, what do you think is the reason that uh, uh, it has not been showcased like other art forms? Good morning. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> yeah. uh, I meant uh, the pro. Here uh, in Pe people of Kerala, they are in special nature. You <laughs> know, <laughs> uh, I, I can I comment on that one? Yes, yes. <laughs> this is what uh, Amma used also used to say. Guru Kalamandalan Kalyani Kuti Amma, who is the mother of Mohini Atam, I would say Kerala dancers or the Mohini Adam dancers who had learned or who had taken or who had grown from that particular contribution which he had done. Yes. I, I think that proper Guru Bhakti was not properly in, uh, given, right? Uh, uh, yeah, okay. Can I, uh, sorry to button, but uh, is it like, uh, are you trying to tell me that uh, the onus or the responsibility would have been on the students of uh, Kalyani Kuti Amma to have. Yeah, Amma had taught a lot of teachers to them to. Uh, yeah. So today's teachers are a lot of Amma students. You know, even um, um, Satyabhama teacher, Kalamandalam Satyabhama, um, um, you know, like uh, Bharati Shivaji. Um, Kanagarile, all these people had learned from Amama, had taken her country, you know, her works, uh, and then they had branched into their own Barnies. But I think Kerala, and uh, the, the first thing they forgot to, I, this is what I think, okay, wherever, uh, wherever I have performed, I have traveled across India, I have traveled to numerous other countries, and I have performed Mohini Adam. I have always felt Mohini Atam is one strong dance form, which can be placed along with other dance forms too. But the unity which is lacking in all these Barnies is causing a lot of uh, tension between the dancers, which is actually, I think, restricting the dancers to come out, all these Mohini Atam dancers to come out. Yeah, Kalamala Kalyani Gutiyama was never given the, the, the honor, honored with the Padma Shri or a Padma Award. So that is the sad part. And she being the, the person, she being the mother of Mohini Atam, that was one thing uh, we, we, we forgot or we, we, we didn't acknowledge her properly. So for me, I felt and I have uh, heard from both uh, Amma and Charyama also. She was not properly honored. She was not probably recognized or... She was a single person. Yes, she was a single person who fought for reviving this dance form. And, and uh, she used to tell 
when you when we see good, oh, it's really good. Yeah. When it is something wrong, she used to openly say yeah. that uh, it is wrong. Remove it. So uh, that is a very sad truth, you know. He was single and the Mohiniyattam and family. family. The Mohiniyattam family has not properly honored or respected uh, the, the the mother. <laughs> so uh, the uh, Mohiniyattam fraternity uh, uh, is lacking that kind of unity, and therefore the it's stifling the growth and also the grandeur that it, it deserves. Very much, very much. Oh, one the of the things that I've learned from Ani teacher, who oh, I've always maintained that they, uh, that's why they, it makes it so special. Ani teacher has always said, if you have to truly learn the dance, you have to forget your ego. <laughs> you know, completely. So I do, that, that's something I, yes, yes, you know, they have never worked for themselves, I feel. It's always been about the dance. And I, this is some of the lessons that I've taken as a regular student from Ani teacher. If you don't have the ego, can you actually grow? But I think a lot of the times when the EO gets in the way, I think we start, uh, the growth stops. No, if it is going to be a question of self-promotion, then somewhere uh, the ethics of the, uh, you know, the art. Or uh, Sanskriti, uh, ethics of uh, Sanskriti is forgotten. I got it. So they, they are thinking for themselves, not for the art form or the dance form. And, um, and I don't want to... Um, Acknowledge their proper guru. And someone has to become higher. Ah. As you can see, Mani teacher will not, she'll just quietly. Yeah, really quiet. So Mani it is in, uh, it is like I, to get you, see, we needed you to see her. She would not have, she would have just kept quiet. So somebody needs to push her and say, no, you have to listen to her. She yeah. needs to be heard. You know, that is the difference between. <laughs> no, her or her. Her, uh, her ambitions, her goals are all uh, far above this. Exactly. exactly. But it is a tragedy, it's a tragedy it that it's not, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. not respected. It is such a, yeah. And that which should, that is exactly what is so great about them. And that is exactly what causes them not to be acknowledged. It's ironic. Yeah. You know? So it's very sad that Mokhinya is struggling like this, even though this dance form has all the, the power, all the the strength to, to stand along with Mohini, all the other classical dance forms. Me being a performer, I have experienced dancing with other styles of you know, classical art dance forms. And I have experienced how, how strong, how, uh, you know, how much you know, the, the dance style has the strength, how the language has the strength. It is a language, it is a language. I told you earlier, you know, I felt that this is my mother tongue. Like mother, Malayalam, I have felt Mohini. So when expressing my thoughts, my what I want to convey through my language, Mohini Adam, I have felt I never felt an insecurity performing on stage. But many students in Mohini Adam have heard they coming and asking me, how come why uh, our audience are not sitting there and watching us for more than half an hour? They are, they are, they, they, they are not they are not able to hold the audience for more than half an hour. I think you know that you know foundation is strong, not strong. Because the foundation is not strong, and then they you know learning Mohiniyattam for four years, they will they think that they can just jump on the stage ah. and do whatever. They want. You know, learning you know a style like that, and Mohiniyattam is all about all about you know that flowing moment, that circular moment, the graceful, that you no know, uh, continuous moment. Many people have heard saying that, oh, you can perform Mohiniyattam uh, in six months. You can do a full kacheri in six months. Yeah, it is it just, a lifetime. It, it is a language. It is a language. It has its own character. It's a, it's a, it has its own uh, the, the rules, right? You know, without understanding, you know, even, even learning English or Malayalam or any other language, how many years you need to be, to, to be interacting with that particular language to, to master that language. I think also today the great challenge is actually getting the art to the regular people. People have forgotten about it, you know, to get, and so we have to bring that art and make like, you know, get a platform to show it in its true thing. So people will be interested to take it out there, to revive that, to have an informed audience also. That also needs to be done. Yeah, that is there, but you know, the dancers also have to have to, to put that of, much time and dedication to learn the art form, yeah. learn yeah. it fundamentally, the fundamental, if it is not there, they are not able to have 
hold the audience yeah. they don't have the subject they, they they are not strong in their subject how can they hold the audience <laughs> Uh, I think um, one of the last questions I have uh, from my end is uh, Smita and Sandhya, what about your children? Are they also, uh, do you have children who learn Mohini art? My, sis my sister has a boy and I have two boys. So, uh, oh, it's essentially uh, women's uh, dance. You don't, I'm sorry. Men don't perform Mohini Atam, right? No, 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 they didn't want to perform Mohini Atam, but they are very good observers. They, my both my children i can say they they don't they can talk in my mohini mudra yeah. no they no but we don't have male performers in mohini yeah they are not they don't, there are male performers there are male performers uh, for but in the family my younger boy he's a carnatic singer he sings um, he has that uh, you know he has he's a very good vocalist uh, they both are artists, but they are not Mohini Atta performers. <laughs> <laughs> not dancers. Not yeah, they are not dancers. I know, I know. I cannot tell you how privileged and how uh, uh, happy I am to have uh, in, had this interaction with you, this conversation with you. Uh, I must thank Money Teacher to make, uh, having made this time for Music of Madras, Rosa to have put it all together and Smita to have joined us and given a very very candid uh, you know perspective to the whole thing uh, i only hope uh, leaving i mean leaving the audience uh, the audience is left more enriched about this art form and somebody out there is listening that even as of today kalyani uh, kutiyamma has not got a award i mean a padma award that's a bare minimum that she deserves Yes. Uh, thank you so much, Mani teacher. It is thank you. I'm so happy, so happy that I can talk. I can Mohini talk Atam is you. our world. Mohini yeah. Atam is it's, our world. Yeah, 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 yeah. To talk for Mohini Atam and to work I for Mohini Atam. Talk so many things. Mm -hmm. I, I feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she can talk more. And of course, of course, we will have more occasions. So happy, okay. so happy that we could talk about this dance form. Yes. And Thank you. Share so much. Much. A few stories with you. <laughs> Thank you. Namaskar. Thank you.